Why didn't they play cards on the ark? Because Noah was standing on the deck. What did the animal that Noah did not us? Uh, the eater. What is a cheetah's favorite food? What? Fast food. Welcome, friends. Thank you for joining us tonight for Kids Church. We love and miss you very much. And we are praying for you every day. Here is a little more Bible trivia. Who did God tell to build an ark? Who did God tell to build an ark? Well, here are the craft supplies you're going to need tonight. Scissors, make sure there's an adult in the room with you. One sheet of paper and crayons or markers. So, go see if you can find the Bible trivia answer. Get your craft supplies and I'll be waiting right back here for you when you get back. Welcome back, friends. Thank you for getting your craft supplies. Now, here is the Bible trivia answer. The question was, who did God tell to build the ark? The answer is Noah. Did you find the answer? I bet you already knew the answer. So before we begin our worship, let's pray together and invite Jesus to join us tonight. Lord, I invite you into my heart and worship tonight. God, sometimes I'm not sure about things. Help me, Lord, to trust in you. Your word tells me in the Bible that I can always trust in God. Fill me with your peace, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's worship the Lord together. Our memory verse tonight is the book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we say? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Let's repeat that. The book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we say? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? And the answer is no one. If God is for us, no one can ever be against us. So tonight we're going to learn how people put their trust in God. Do you trust God? Can we trust God? The answer is yes. We can always trust God. So let's open up our ears and our heart and listen. Welcome to our Bible lesson. Pharaoh was the ruler of Egypt and he had made slaves of all of God's people. Well, God heard their cries and he promised to free them. He chose Moses and Aaron to go to Pharaoh and demand that the Israelites be allowed to leave. Well, Moses did as God told him and asked Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. Let them go to the desert for three days and offer sacrifices to God. But Pharaoh said no. God began a series of plagues on Egypt to demonstrate his power. The first plague was the Nile River. Moses told Pharaoh, since he not listened to God's request to let his people go, to go to the water, hold out his rod, and when he did, the Nile River was going to be turned to blood. Now, when this river turned to blood, also all the water in Egypt turned to blood. So the people didn't have any clean water to drink. And they were upset. Even the fish died. But Pharaoh still said no. He would not allow the people to go. A week later, Moses spoke with Pharaoh again. He still wouldn't listen. So God sent a plague, and this time he sent frogs. They were everywhere. They were in their bowls. They were in their beds. They were everywhere. So Pharaoh asked Moses, if you get rid of these frogs, then I'll let you go. So Moses got rid of the frogs, but Pharaoh broke his promise and would not let the people go. When Pharaoh refused Moses' third request, God turned the dust into gnats. 
I hate gnats. They bite me. They make my face swell up. They were everywhere. When they would, when the people would eat, they would get in their mouth, they crawl in their ears, they get in your eyes. When you're blinking, they're in your eyelashes. They were everywhere. The people were very frustrated. But Pharaoh would stop, not give in. So the fourth warning came from Moses to Pharaoh. The Lord said, let my people go or I will send a swarm of flies. Well, the Lord sent flies. The flies were all over Egypt except in Goshen where the people of God lived. And Pharaoh said, if you get rid of these flat, flat flies, then I'll let the people go. Moses got rid of the flies, but Pharaoh said, no, the people could not go. Then God sent a terrible disease that killed all of the livestock, the cows, the goats, the cattle, the camels. But the animals that belonged to God's people, they were fine. And Pharaoh still refused to let the people go. After that, Moses threw a handful of ash into the air and painful boils were everywhere on all of the people in Egypt and their animals. They were covered. They hurt so bad. They were so sore. The people were in misery. But even though the people were suffering, Pharaoh said no. He wasn't willing to let them go. So next, God sent a storm and with it were giant hailstones. These hailstones beat down the crops and it killed animals and people. Pharaoh said, if you'll stop the hailstone in the storm, I'll let you go. But when the storm was over, Pharaoh said no. Then God calls thick darkness to cover the land for three days. No one could go anywhere or do anything. But where the people of God lived, they could see they had light. Pharaoh told Moses, I don't ever want to see you again. God sent next locust. Locust is kind of like a grasshopper. They're very close. I think they're Little antennas are a little bit shorter, but they eat everything they see. They ate every piece of fruit that was left and every piece of grain that was left after the storm. Then God said to Moses, I'll bring one more plague on Egypt. After that, Pharaoh will ask you to go. That night, God will strike down every firstborn male in every household. However, God will pass over every home that had blood on the top and the sides of the door. Moses told his people to take a lamb and smear some of its blood on the top and the sides of the door. So, of course, I'm not going to use blood, but I have paint. So they smeared it on the sides on the top. That night the family would roast a lamb and eat it with bitter herbs and flatbread made without yeast. The people should be dressed for traveling, ready to leave at any moment. And at midnight, God caused all the firstborn males in Egypt to die, including the king's son. Pharaoh sent word to Moses, Get out from my people and take your flocks and herds and be gone. God had already given Moses instructions for his people, and they obeyed the commands. When the word came that they were to leave, they gathered up their possessions hurriedly, and they were on their way. At last, Moses and Aaron were leading God's people out of bondage. God cares for us just like he cared for his children in Egypt long ago. In fact, he made a way for us to get out of our messes, too. Just like Pharaoh, we have our ups and downs. But Jesus died on the cross for all the wrong things we've done. 
if we believe him and ask him to forgive our sins, we can ask him to come into our hearts. I'm thankful that Jesus sets me free from my sin. If you would like to participate in tonight's craft, you need crayons, one sheet of paper, and one pair of scissors. And remember to have a parent in the room if you're using scissors. Okay, tonight's craft is an origami frog, so we need a square. So this is a rectangle and two triangles make a square. Now if you can, when you bring this bottom right corner over here and you make it line up, try if you can, can not to crease this. Um, if you have to, it's okay. But you maybe you could get an adult to help you. I, we're only doing this because we need the square. And then you're finished with your scissors. So now we have a square. The next thing I did was I colored my square green because I'm making a frog and I thought my frog should be green. So fold your paper in half, crease it really good in half, open it up, fold it in half the other way, crease it really good, and open it up. Get the top right corner and bend it and fold it to where it comes to your center point and then crease it. Get your left top corner, bend it and fold it where it comes to the center point again and crease it really good. Then get your bottom piece, bottom of the paper, fold it in half to where it meets this crease that we made in our center. So far it looks like this. Okay, now I'll grab the right side and fold it about in half to meet that center point again. And I'll crease it. Over here, I'll get the left side, bend it in half to where it meets at this center point again, crease it. Then I'll fold it to where fold it in half. And I'll fold it in half again, crease it really hard, and when we're finished, this is our jumping frog. You um, can get a crayon or a marker and make um, eyes. If you wanted to, you could make him have a tongue. But this is the frog. This was the first plague that, the second plague in, um, that Moses performed in Egypt. God is trustworthy. We can always trust God. Thank you for experiencing Kids Church with us tonight. We had fun. Join us for more fun on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. for Sunday School. Now let's pray together. Lord, thank you for being trustworthy. I put my trust in you. God, I know you will always lead me into truth and you will help me to make good choices every day. Thank you for your power, your goodness, and your love that is with me always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. See you Sunday morning.